Welcome to Millerton and the town of Northeast. This short slideshow will tell you about the history of the Irondale Schoolhouse and the journey it took from Irondale to where it is situated today. This is the earliest known interior photograph of the Irondale Schoolhouse. The potbelly stove was in the center surrounded by school desks with the teacher's desk in front of the blackboard. The exact age of this building is not known, but it dates from the mid 19th century and is shown on a map made in 1858. At one time, there were 14 one-room schoolhouses like this in the town of Northeast, which encompasses Millerton, Irondale, and the surrounding countryside. This picture shows Gladys Cook Woodnut, the last teacher at the schoolhouse in 1929, standing on the school's stepstone. When central schools were organized, the Irondale schoolhouse closed in 1930. This photo from the 1950s shows the schoolhouse at its location on Route 22, about a mile north of Millerton. It served the small hamlet of Irondale, which was an industrial settlement long before the founding of Millerton in 1851. This picture from 2008 shows the aging schoolhouse. Over the years, the state highway encroached upon the building. It seemed destined for demolition. The weathered siding and damaged window frames cried out for rescue. Reflections in the Window, a photo by Christine Fritz, shows Ralph Fidelli looking at the cupola atop the schoolhouse, dreaming of wonderful things to come. From 2008 to 2013, Ralph spearheaded the effort to protect the schoolhouse from further deterioration and to find it a new home. The tarp on the roof kept rain from doing even more damage. The Friends of the Irondale Schoolhouse, a nonprofit organization, was formed and purchased the building for $30,000. We began emergency repairs, especially to the roof. Badly damaged, the old roof was stripped and any rotted wood was removed and replaced. New cedar shingles showed that the restoration process had begun. This is the original cupola, an iconic feature of the building. This is where the school bell hung. The cupola became the logo of our friends group. The cupola was removed, but was too far gone to be repaired. Craftsman David Shapiro masterfully replicated it in durable Sapili mahogany. Here is the exact replica ready to go back on the roof once the building was moved to its new home in Millerton. In 2013, with the new roof completed, we were preparing for the move, even to the point of testing some paint colors to try to approximate what we saw in old black and white photographs. The clapboards were scraped as part of preparing the building for the move. Over the 75 years that this was an active schoolhouse, some students carved their initials and dated them. Before the move to Millerton, some of our volunteers, including Rob Waite, gave the schoolhouse a prime coat to protect the exterior. Arrangements had to be made with New York State to allow the schoolhouse to be placed along the Harlem Valley Rail Trail. This is a virtual rendition of the schoolhouse on its new site. In the spring of 2013, foundation work began. The foundation consists of 16 concrete piers placed four and a half feet into the ground, below the frost line. Here's the foundation looking south along the rail trail. The concrete posts are aligned with the structural beams that will support the building. In the late fall of 2013, the schoolhouse was lifted in preparation for the move to Millerton. A permit to close Route 22 during the move was obtained. Then Scott Morrison and a moving crew from Vermont carefully orchestrated every step of the complex process. The schoolhouse was raised on steel girders and a flatbed trailer was slid in snugly beneath the building, ready to carry it to its new site. Some siding on the right side is removed in preparation for removing the roof. This is the schoolhouse attic with the bracing and cross bracing of each rafter. All the nails connecting the roof to the building walls were removed or cut. Removing the roof allowed the building to travel on the highway without us having to incur the great expense of raising all the electric and communication wires along the way. On moving day, December 19, 2013, snow was on the ground from a storm a few days before. The snow got shoveled off the roof and the roof was lifted. Here's the building making the turn onto Main Street in Millerton. 
and the roof is not far behind. In the midst of a stormy December, we were lucky to have a crisp, clear day to make the big move. The roof was taken off and put back on on the same day. On December 20th, the schoolhouse is resting four feet above its foundation, ready to be lowered onto the concrete piers. The building had to be rocked down four inches at a time on either side until it reached the piers. In the spring of 2014, the exterior is repaired. Clabberts have been replaced and the schoolhouse is safely on its new foundation. The clabberts were numbered and returned to their original locations. The exterior restoration was accomplished by the volunteer work of local craftsmen. The replica of the cupola is put in place. A darker color combination for the schoolhouse was determined by an analysis of earlier layers of paint on the building. The exterior nears completion. Ralph Fidelli and Curtis Sawchuck created the replica stone foundation. To make the building accessible to all, we installed this ramp. Not an authentic part of the original schoolhouse, but a welcome low maintenance addition. Now we turned our attention to the inside of the schoolhouse. The building had been used as a workshop in recent years, and we had to remove all the modifications the previous owner added. The cracked plaster walls, the result of many years without heat, needed repair. Layers of paint were carefully scraped and skim coated with plaster. All the original blackboards survived the move to Millerton. The bench, which ran across the back wall, was not only for sitting, smaller children would stand on it to write on the blackboards. Building archaeology revealed these paint scrapings. This is how we determined the first colors of the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse had two front cloakrooms, one for girls and one for boys. This is the front wall prior to restoring the wall between the two doorways. The restoration of the interior was as painstaking as the exterior. We placed time capsules in the entry cloakroom and in the front wall for someone to find decades from now. The capsules include the names of those involved, photos and newspaper clippings. New wainscoting matches the other walls. All the surfaces of the interior were meticulously reconditioned. Here's the refinished blackboard wall. The 48-star United States flag was presented to the Irondale Schoolhouse after the end of World War I. We are delighted with how this restoration has turned out. One-room schoolhouses were an important part of the history of life in rural America. We are proud to have saved this old schoolhouse and given it a new role in the Millerton community. The Irondale Schoolhouse lives again to give you a moment to think about the extraordinary legacy of one-room schoolhouses. We hope you enjoy your visit.